All right, we hiked a couple miles up into the mountains, found a really nice spot to camp. And today, rather than doing survival competition, we're gonna put our personal camping knives to the test. So even though Mark's camp knife is a more expensive one, my SE4 is built sturdier and is really gonna take his to the cleaners. So I know Jaron loves his knife, but I don't know if that knife is gonna love him. He's gotta have the skills to be able to put it to use, and I just don't think he has them. There's not really a stage that I'm too nervous about today. They're all pretty simple tasks, tasks that you can do every day when you're camping, and that's kind of the point. So I'm excited to be up in the mountains for today's competition. It feels pretty good out, surrounded by beautiful scenery. It's a great location for me to kick Mark's butt. Hey everybody, Jaron and Mark here, and today we've got another competition for you. Now since it's warmer outside and people are out there camping, we decided to put our personal camp knives to the test. Now, competition camp knives has three time stages for points. Fastest time gets five points, runner up gets three. And in our minimalist camping scenario, the three stages will be to build a tarp shelter using a sole blanket and paracord, carve a fork with a minimum of two prongs, and then build a frame to suspend a pot to boil water, as well as carve three feather sticks for kindling. Now, due to dry conditions, the area we went to didn't allow open flame, so we didn't actually start a fire. However, we did get plenty of use with our knives. Now, I am running a Bark River Bushcrafter, and I use an SE4. Well, let's get out there and see how competition camp knife went down. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. go. So starting off, I uh, used the paracord to start making my frame. I used uh, clove hitches to, for all my knots, nice and sturdy. Tighten it up. I started out by tying my rope to a tree and then running it back to a rock. If I was to do this for actual camping purposes, since the weather is really nice, I would make a more open tarp shelter, but since we had to do something different, I decided to go with a more traditional A-frame. Fortunately, it was too low. Ended up having to go back, struggle with the knot a little bit, getting it undone. I was able to get it a little bit higher. Even once it was higher, I still don't think it was quite high enough. Whoa, that really smells. So setting up the shelter, I started smelling a really strong smell, and then I realized the sole blanket is what it was. If you pick one of these up, I highly recommend that you let it air out before you take it out on your trip. I got the first corner tied down, went right to a live tree. So that style of shelter that I built wasn't my first choice. I was gonna go more of a, a tent shape, but whereas it's warmer weather and I got a look at the campsite that we were gonna use, I decided to go with that one, uh, be a little bit easier to construct given the surroundings I had. And then I went to uh, tie down the second corner. And the stake that I picked uh, was too brittle, broke off when I tried to hammer it in the ground. Once I had retied the main spine line, I threw the tarp over. So I started cutting three foot sections of paracord. I realized I didn't have enough. So rather than tying off those back two corners, I just used rocks to hold them down. Uh, went up to the front. For time's sake, I just wrapped them around the rocks. There was enough weight. I didn't really feel like I needed to tie them off. I used rocks to pin down the back two. Made sure I got some hefty rocks that weren't going to roll off if I were to hit the foil overnight while I was sleeping. And in that process, I decided that a rock was going to be my solution to my troubled corner. I can put my fire right here, keep me nice and warm all night long, and I am done. Mark has a good chance of making a good shelter. I think we'll be neck and neck in time. Um, I do know that I 
used the style that he was going to do, so he's going to have to come up with something different. If I was to do it in real life, I would do a much better job. I'd take a couple more minutes, but since it was speed, there was enough room in there that you could crawl in. Not ideal, but finished it up. Stopped the clock, and sure enough, I don't think it was fast enough. So starting out, I already had the stick, started cleaning it up because it had some knots protruding out of it. Wouldn't be too comfortable in your hand when you're eating. Then I started to uh, shave down the prongs, uh, trying to find the best angle to come at it, to separate the two. The stick naturally had two protruding points at the top, so I decided to use that one and just accentuate those. So one of the things we were able to select our woods beforehand, I tried to select a, a nice green piece that would be easy to carve, that the uh, blade would go through quicker. Uh, I found a down tree and uh, was able to grab uh, about a little bit about a thumb thickness. I didn't need too much control just to power through, so rather than putting my thumb up on the spine, I just needed it down, uh, draw some quick, easy edges. Um, feathered out the stick, got a nice broad edge on both sides, and then just worked in uh, to make the prongs, sharpen them out a little bit. The scenario was that we were gonna eat mountain houses. I think that's enough that I could scoop up whatever was there. Be a little messy, but you could do it. So after a poor performance with the tarp shelter, I wanted to redeem myself, and uh, I think I did it with making a quick, easy fork. I spent a lot of time shaving them down, and I think I could have picked it up a little bit and made them a little skinnier. I should do it. Give me some food. It's kind of thicker than I want, but. Okay. All right, so uh, here's my little lobster claw. It's my utensil for eating. It's not the prettiest thing. It took me a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but uh, I think it'll do the job. So it started out, I knew I wanted to save some time by getting some pieces of Y sticks where the branches branched off so I didn't have to carve anything or I could just sharpen the ends. So went out, found a couple good looking sticks that would work, broke them off, uh, broke off the excess rather than use a knife. Sometimes it's just faster to break the stick. So I started by uh, collecting wood. I wanted to collect it all and get it out of the way so I didn't have to get up and go find some more. I needed to find a stick with a good Y in it so that I could use that as my brace for the kettle. Then I needed a longer stick for the support for the kettle. Uh, so I'm just trying to give a little bit of a point to these so they'll drive into the ground a little bit more so that I have some support for the, the water. I don't want it falling over on me while it's boiling. And uh, the second one, when I started working on it, I noticed there's a nice uh, wedge shape at the, at the bottom where a branch had come off, a nice kind of knot. And uh, it was hard wood, I wasn't quite getting through it, so stupidly, I decided to try to break it against a rock. Kind of thinking in my head, this is dumb, because I'm gonna break off one of the limbs up top, and sure enough, it broke off. It cost me a lot of time to run out and find another stick. Then I went to the same old camp spot that Mark did to find the feather sticks. Found a couple there, but it was slim picking. So I went up the trail a bit and found a down tree, pulled some from there. When I got back to the campsite, 
I did my feather stick first so that they would be ready and potentially could start the fire and get that going while I built the kettle support so I could get that on an already warm fire. So I came back to the fire pit with that new stick, sharpened it up. Um, drove it into the ground, just twisting. The ground is hard here, it's packed down, but a couple rocks, that felt very secure. Making those feather sticks was pretty difficult. I didn't have the best wood to do it, and I tried going the opposite direction Mark did, and that's, naturally that's not what you want to do. Um, even though you're gonna potentially slip and cut all your feather sticks off, I, I still think it's easy to go from the bottom to the top. Because if you're going from the top to the bottom, you don't have a place to stick your hand to get that force in there to get the feather stick. So it just comes down to being careful with your cuts. Pretty ugly feather sticks, but uh, got my supporting branch. Cut a little notch in it for uh, right at the uh, midpoint. So that's just a knot, notch, so that'll rest nice there and uh, was able to put my pot on to boil water uh, for your mountain house or whatever you needed to do. Once I got done with my uh, frame for my pot, I went ahead and uh, went to look for kindling. I saw a previously built fire pit. There was some wood already by it. I tried to find some thin pieces of wood to make my feather sticks, brought it back to camp, started cutting my feather sticks. One of the things that I may have done a little bit wrong is I started at the bottom and worked to the top, so a couple times I slipped and took off all the uh, work that I'd already done. Probably have been better for me to start at the top and work my way down. So to keep my time nice and low, I didn't feel the need to carve anything. The stick had broken off in a nice sharp point, so I staked that down in the ground and twisted it, and then used rocks to support it. Now get some good feather sticks going. This one's just a bonus. So, the support beam that the kettle sat on, I uh, wanted to give it a little notch at the top so that the kettle wouldn't slide all the way down it since it's at an angle. So I cut straight in at a 90 degree onto the, the branch itself and then I feathered in so I could slip it onto that notch and it wouldn't continue to slide. and I used rocks to hold that in place. I'm just not gonna roll over, you know, crumple up some bark in here, put it in the feather sticks, give me some kindling. Got some uh, little curly cues going on my sticks. I went ahead and did four pieces because I wasn't really satisfied with the quality I was getting. Oh, those are ugly. Ugly looking feather sticks. But we'll do. Uh, some of the shavings made uh, good tinder and uh, pretty much ready to go. We need to do a little bit more to get the fire going, but it was enough for the competition. There you go, ready to light a fire, need a little bit more. All right, not bad. One of the things I always recommend to people when they ask me what knives I carry, I always have two knives. 
a nice fixed blade, and an EDC. Today, I've been using the uh, Bark River Bush Crafter. It's a great knife. I've been using it now for a while. Haven't need to sharp, sharpen it. Has a great edge. The Scandi grind works excellent. I love my SE4. I love the micarta handles. I love the edge retention. With how many times I use this, on day hikes, on camping trips, this edge is still nice and sharp. It is 1095, so you have to take care of it, but for a bushcraft knife, I, I would always pick this one. All right, so points in the end. I had 11 points. Jaren, you had 13. Congratulations, you Thanks. won it. I do think that things turned out a little more subjective than we thought, so maybe you guys could comment who you think did better and what your personal camp knives are. Yeah, I will say that I think we both would have done better if it hadn't have been a timed event. I mean, I don't go camping to do a race, but to relax. But then it wouldn't be a competition. True. Well, if you guys need gear for your next camp out, click here. And if you're looking for a nice new fixed blade, click here. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm pretty pleased with it. My feather <laughs> That's pretty much what it was, feather <laughs> My feather sticks look like shit.